Hey guys, what's up? This is Bharat, you're watching iGyan, and uh, today we are checking out uh, the Redmi Note 10 Pro Max. Today we've also checked out the Redmi Note 10, and we've already done a video for it. So you can click on uh, the banner on the top right to go to that, or we leave a link in the description below as well. So this phone starts at 18,999 for the six gigabyte plus 64 gigabyte variant but uh, you also have the six gigabyte plus 128 gigabyte variant. That's for 19,999. And then you also get the eight gigabyte plus 128 gigabyte variant, which is for 21,999. So quite an expensive phone if you compare it to the basic Redmi Note 10, but quite a lot different as well with respect to some of the specifications, which is basically the 120 Hertz Super AMOLED display here. So we will look into the box, uh, but what I want to talk about is this color. It's called the vintage bronze color. This is not the color that we have. We have uh, the black color, as you can see on the back over here. Uh, this is the dark night color in the six plus 128 gigabyte variant. Uh, Redmi says that they didn't have uh, the bronze color ready before the launch. Hopefully we'll get to do a hands-on with it later on. Possibly for the review, we can get a bronze color. Uh, but for now, we only have uh, the black color. So we'll quickly unbox this, see what all is in the box, and I'll give you my first impressions. Our review will be a little later as we test this device. It'll take us a few days. And once we are ready for the review, we'll have the review out for you. So this box is already open. I do have my knife here, but I don't need it. It's already open because apparently they were doing some software updates, etc. So uh, let's quickly see what all is inside the box. So you do get this first box, which I'm assuming has a few accessories. So you do have the SIM ejector tool over here. And uh, then if I go inside, there is this little pamphlet for uh, your basic user guide, etc. And uh, then what appears to be a silicone cover. So the Redmi Note 10 also came with a silicone cover. And uh, this one also does come with it. And uh, the cover itself is also frosted in this and you do have this texture. So that's nice. Uh, I don't know if it'll impact or it'll hold uh, dust in uh, the back over here. Hopefully it won't. We'll test that out as well. And this is the phone. Like I said, we've got it in the dark night, is it called? What is the color called? Dark night. Nothing to do with Batman, but it's called the dark night color. So uh, I'm also gonna quickly get rid of this sticker. And uh, there's a little bit of residue left on uh, this. So that's what it basically looks like. It is glossy as compared to the frosted uh, finish on uh, the Redmi Note 10. So if you do want to make it frosted, you'll have to pop on this back cover. Yeah, and it's a difficult cover to pop on, but you can. And uh, then it also has this uh, USB-C sort of port protector. So you can have that closed when you're not using the device or charging it or whatever. And uh, then you do have proper cutouts here and there is a raised lip here as well. So that's really nice. This will protect your camera quite well. And then you do have a cutout for the fingerprint sensor, which is in the power button. And uh, then a cutout for the microphone, the speaker on the bottom and uh, the speaker on the top, a few ports as well. So let's put this to the side for the time being and uh, let's take a look at what else is inside the box. So I'm assuming it's uh, the same as uh, the Redmi Note 10. This is a 33 watt charger, so that's good. You also have the orange inlay in uh, the USB port. And then you also have this uh, high quality cable, which we saw on the Redmi Note 10 as well. I really like this cable. It's a really high quality cable. And the fact that they're giving it on their uh, base variant as well and on the higher end phone as well, that's quite cool. And uh, the charger is also the same charger on both the devices. So while the phone turns on, let's uh, look at uh, some of the specifications. So on the front, you do have a 16 megapixel f 2.45 sensor. Now this is a one micron uh, pixel size, uh, but it's a much smaller face punch, face punch, but it is a much smaller punch hole uh, than typically what you see. So it's a compact punch hole and it doesn't take too much space on the front and it doesn't look too distracting to be quite honest. Uh, below that is the screen. Now this is a larger screen compared to the Redmi Note 10. Uh, so this is a 6.67 inch uh, display, which is a full HD plus display. And it is a super AMOLED display with a resolution of 2400 by 1080 pixels. And uh, then you have 1200 nits of peak brightness as opposed to the 1100 nits on uh, the Redmi Note 10. And then this also has 120 Hertz of refresh rate, which uh, the Redmi Note 10 doesn't have. 
So if you do want a higher refresh rate, uh, this will be the phone to pick for that. There is a Gorilla Glass 5 on the front of this. Uh, the Redmi Note 10 has Gorilla Glass 3. The Redmi Note 10 Pro Max has Gorilla Glass 5. And uh, then uh, there is a screen protector pre-installed. Now in our case, there is quite a nasty bubble on the screen protector over here. And that is because this phone was opened before it was sent to us and the software was updated. It's possible that they bumped it or it's possible that in a rush to send this device to us for review, uh, this was overlooked. Uh, it may not be the case with your phone, but if it is, then I would recommend that you speak to the company and get this replaced the day you get the device. Don't let a bubble sit on uh, the screen. If there is a dust particle under it, it may end up damaging your screen from there. So make sure to check that out. We'll probably remove this and replace it. There are a few deficiencies on the screen protector here. So on the bottom of the phone, you do have uh, the microphone along with uh, the USB-C port and the speakerphone over here. And on the right of the device, you do have the fingerprint sensor, which I'll just show you and set it up for the first initial setup. And then you also have the volume buttons. And on the top is the 3.5 mm headphone jack along with the secondary speaker a noise cancelling microphone and an infrared blaster. So in the Redmi Note 10 as well, the headphone jack is on the bottom. On this, it's on the top. And uh, on the left of the device, uh, you do have the SIM tray. Now this is a triple slot tray, so you can pop in a micro SD card and two SIM cards together. And on the back is where all the real action for this uh, device is. So you do have a 108 megapixel camera, which is the main camera. It is a Samsung sensor, it's called the Samsung HM2 and it's got a f1.9 aperture, a 0.7 micron pixel size. So it's not the largest pixel size, but you do get 108 megapixel shots if those are something that you're interested in. So you do get a 2x telephoto sensor, which also doubles up as a five megapixel macro camera. And uh, that is uh, useful for macro maybe, but for telephoto, a five megapixel camera means that you will get a lot of noise in your images uh, if you compare them to the regular camera. So you can use a lens for uh, zooming in and a lens for macro. Uh, some of the good quality ones, uh, we'll recommend some that we like in uh, the description below if you guys are interested in getting those. And uh, then you also have a eight megapixel ultra wide camera, which is quite usable. It makes the field of view 118 degrees, so you can take uh, much wider shots as well. It does still have the ultra premium branding here. I don't know why they did that, but it does have it and then what appears to be a sort of focus module and then an LED flash. So this hasn't been mentioned to us at all. I believe it's a focus module. We'll have a look at this, test it out when we do turn on the camera. The main camera does do 4K video, but it only does it till 30 FPS, which is quite disappointing. But you do have 1080p video with 60 FPS as well as 120 FPS. Uh, which is great. So uh, I'm going to quickly set up the fingerprint sensor here. Uh, you can do it while setting up the device. So I'll pop in my ultra secure pin and uh, then I'll set up the fingerprint sensor. So the fingerprint sensor on the Redmi Note 10 as we tested was quite uh, responsive. I'm assuming it's the same sensor. Uh, it does set up much easier than it did on that device. So you can also choose your launcher if you want the classic launcher or the app drawer. I'm gonna stick with classic for the time being. It's probably gonna ask me what apps I want. I don't want any of these apps. So this is basically bloatware. I would recommend that you download only apps that you want. So skip this step. And uh, then you're basically ready to go. So much less bloatware than what we've seen in the past and uh, the user experience or the user interface seems uh, pretty responsive uh, for the time being. Uh, but apparently uh, Xiaomi or Redmi are gonna be pushing out an update to MIUI in which you'll be able to remove quite a lot of these pre-installed applications uh, that you don't want to use. So apart from a certain few apps, like get apps they've not allowed to remove, which I think should be the first app they should allow to remove. And then also you can't remove security, which again is a problematic thing. Cleaner is a part of security, so you can remove the app itself, but it still lives in the security app. So I think this app is something that most people don't need and uh, Xiaomi should give the ability to, if not remove it, but disable it. We don't want it. You can keep it to yourself. I'm not interested. <laughs> uh, let's look at uh, the display real quick. I want to see the setting options. So you do have a dark mode right here. I can switch to dark mode, which is fine, but I'm more interested in the refresh rate. So this is the refresh rate option and you can switch uh, between standard and 100 and 
120 FPS or 120 Hertz as far as uh, displays are concerned. So if you are uh, playing uh, games or uh, watching content, which is 120 Hertz for some reason, uh, you can uh, do that on this device. It makes it much smoother as well in the user interface as well. Uh, but more importantly, there is no a variable refresh rate in this. So you can't get a refresh rate based on what content you're watching. So if you're watching something that is 24p, for example, this will jutter in this. So you want to reduce it to the lowest possible and watch uh, content like that so that you don't see a lot of uh, jumpiness in your video. They are planning on introducing some additional refresh rates. I'm not sure if that's going to happen and when that's going to happen, but uh, the display looks really nice. It's got good amounts of depth and good amounts of color as well. And because it's 120 Hertz refresh rate, plus it's a Super AMOLED display, plus it's 1200 nits of brightness, it should be good indoors, outdoors, and for mostly all kinds of usage. It also has a really nice viewing angles. I'm not seeing any kind of uh, sort of color loss or brightness loss at any angle, so that's nice. So it's a pretty impressive display. Again, in this price category, with this kind of uh, display technology, with the kind of refresh rate, this will be one of the first uh, with the quality of display, with the brightness of the display, and uh, that will set this device apart. Of course, we'll be doing a full review and mostly more phones are gonna be launching later this year that will possibly match this or beat this. But for now, this is an impressive display uh, just as far as specs are concerned and we'll be testing it out more in depth. Running everything in this is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 732G chip, and uh, you do get a 2.3 gigahertz octa-core CPU, which is paired with the Adreno 618 GPU. And like I said, you can choose between six gigabyte of RAM or eight gigabyte of RAM, depending on what variant you get. And that RAM is LPDDR4X, so it's a pretty good quality RAM as far as the device is concerned. Every time the company tells us the phone weighs a certain uh, weight, uh, we always seem to get it wrong completely. So this time Xiaomi claims that it's 192 grams. Uh, let's see what the actual weight of the phone is. It's about 194 grams, about 93, so it's slightly more. But let's try a few times. It's about 194, I think. So, which is quite strange, maybe it's the two grams of the screen protector that they don't weigh. Uh, when they give the actual spec, but it's 194 grams, which is still quite lightweight uh, for this device. The phone also has a 5020 milliamp hour battery and does support fast charging. And like I mentioned, the fast charger is included inside the box. Let's quickly listen to the speaker. That's one thing I want to check out uh, because the speaker on uh, the Redmi Note 10 was pretty nice. So I want to see if it's the same speaker on this device as well. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Bharat, you're watching iGAN, and it's time for Top Tech. So let's quickly get started. So there seems to be a massive improvement as far as the speaker is concerned. So this is much louder and much more fuller sounding uh, than the Redmi Note 10, even if the company claims that there's not a lot of difference between these devices. Right off the bat, there are quite a lot of things that are different. So the display is completely different. The speakers are much louder. The camera is completely different. The chip is completely different. In itself, it's a completely different category of product as well. The price bracket is also completely different. So this is definitely a much better device. And if you're thinking that you should get the Redmi Note 10 versus the Redmi Note 10 Pro Max, uh, you're gonna lose out on quite a few things. Overall, I think that it's a pretty good attempt from uh, Redmi to sort of make AMOLED more available to consumers and also make 120 hertz of refresh rate more available to consumers. So the device still has uh, the IP53 rating that we saw with the Redmi Note 10, so it is splash resistant. If you end up using it in rain or if you end up spilling something on this, ideally you want to quickly remove this from any kind of water that it's in and then dry off the device, not charge it for a while, and it should be good to go. Uh, but again, like I said, uh, it's something that doesn't really guarantee this phone surviving, but it's a good feature to have, and it will prevent your phone from getting damaged easily. And then you do have your usual set of features over here. So you do have the FM radio, screen recorder, and a audio recorder as well. And then you also have the Mi Remote app, which will allow you to control your home stuff. So a television or... Uh, Things like the air conditioner can be controlled from this device as well. And it does have a few other sensors which include a 360 degree ambient light sensor. And then you also have a proximity sensor, an e-compass, an accelerometer, a gyroscope. Those are pretty standard, but you do get a full-size compass in there as well. 
So if you're navigating, you can get turn-by-turn -turn directions uh, without any problems. You still get some of these apps, uh, but these are luckily uninstallable right now, so you can get rid of some of these, including Me Credit, things that you don't need, you can quickly remove from here. Me Pay is one of those uh, other apps that will not be allowed to be removed. I wish they allowed to do that as well. Let's quickly look at the camera. You do have a full pro mode in the camera app as well. And uh, you can also click 108 megapixel shot if you so choose to. Let's try it. Let's see if it makes any difference. It's quite quick. Usually when you take these larger megapixel shots, uh, cameras used to hesitate quite a lot. But this looks nice and it is able to navigate through it quite quickly. Technology has evolved quite a lot in the past couple of years. You also have a standard shot and then you have the ability to take an ultra wide and it's quite the difference. So this is the ultra wide and this is the standard. So you can see quite the difference and colors look really nice. Again, first impressions, I can't really tell you all what I think about the camera, uh, but it does look nice at uh, first impressions. I'm not too sure about uh, the pixel size. Uh, that may be a problem in the future. You do have some of these interesting um, shooting modes, including short video, which may be useful for reels. Um, you have dual video, you also have clone, uh, you have time lapse, and uh, then you also have the ability to click pictures of documents, so like a scanning mode. You also have a night mode. All of these will test out for the full review and get back to you for that. If you guys have any particular questions about this device, let us know in the comment section below. It's got a really nice in-hand feel. I do prefer the frosted finish on the cheaper phones versus this glossy finish. I do understand it makes the phone look premium, uh, but personally, I enjoy the frosted finish more. Which one do you like? Uh, as far as the finishes are concerned, do you like the one on the Redmi Note 10? Or do you like the one on the Redmi Note 10 Pro Max? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, go check out the video for the Redmi Note 10. Again, linked on the top right or in the description below. And uh, let us know your thoughts. If you have any questions, let us know those in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're not already a part of Team IGAN. This has been Bharat. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.